With my first tips and tricks video on Dragon's Dogma doing very well and me still learning a lot more about the game, I figured I should make another one. There are a ton of really small items and mechanics that can change this game for you, especially if you make the switch from normal to hard. Here are 15 more tips and tricks to help you slay monsters in Dragon's Dogma. You may occasionally open up your stash and realize you have a ton of skulls. You often pick them up in the catacombs after fighting skeletons and really any time that you're in a dungeon. But what you might not realize is that skulls are actually valuable. You can throw them at enemies to inflict the curse debilitation, which causes your foes to take more damage. Of course, certain beasts can be resistant to this, but those who are not become much easier to take down. So put some skulls in your pawn's inventory just in case you need a bit of a leg up. Cyclopses in particular were extremely easy to inflict with curse when I tried this out. Damage towards the end of Dragon's Dogma is nowhere near comparable to the damage you deal at first. Fighting the lowest tier monster can take some time. To give you a good increase in damage early on, you can buy really good weapons from the Black Cat Shop in Grand Soren. For sorcerers, the Caged Fury is incredible. Not only does it look quite interesting with magical energy encased in a small cage, but it packs a punch. Successive magic attacks will grant you a glowing aura which buffs your damage. This is a very similar item to the Force Hatchet Sword. Gain much more damage at max hits of 10, however getting hit at 10 stacks reduces stamina to 0. If you have a good selection of pawns, you can spam some decent magic like Miasma to build this quickly. Considering sorcerer attacks at range, this makes it easier to keep the stacks without losing them. But do use pawns because solo, this can be a rough strategy. Regardless, the damage is considerable. One major flaw in this game is that walking all over the map is a slog. Due to the stamina drain on running, it really eats up your game time to get from one location to another. This is why NG Plus is so great in Dragon's Dogma. Not only do you keep your fast travel points on the next run, but you get a few extra of the port crystals. You can redesign your character for the next run, making things still unique as well. But the big reason to do NG Plus is for God's Bane. This is a reward to the player after the end events where you can then decide to start in a new world. Using it commits seppuku with an honorable death. It replaces the save exit strategy used to farm gear from different chests. Instead of quitting to the main menu, you can God's Bane saving a lot of time. Just be sure to save before using it or you might end up much further back than you thought. What is the best pawn vocation? There are plenty of options and each adds something to your party that can help in combat. But often people want to know what the best possible options are so that they can get the most out of the AI. In my opinion, you'll have an excellent party running with Fighter, Strider, and Mage. Regardless of what you play, this gets most of the aspects that you're going to want. Ranged options, magic buffs, and an aggressive tank. Fighter pawns are really good at blocking damage with their shield, making them stay alive for a long time. They also like to engage enemies up close, granting them more chances to attack. Striders can be really insane because Helm Splitter is such a good skill. Plus, they have downpour volley for precise bow attacks. Then you have the Mage. I like Sorcerer attacks better, but Mage is very good at healing your party consistently while still granting you an element on your weapons. I highly recommend not taking a Mage as your main pawn though. Pretty much every Mage in existence has on healing since it's sort of their job. So you can better set up a strider or fighter on your personal pawn while almost always getting a mage that does the job. Barbed nails are easy to overlook, but they might be the best accessory overall for your builds. This will go in a ring slot and allow you to much better knock down foes or stagger them. What it does exactly is offer one defense along with 100 knockdown and 100 stagger. Since hard increases enemy stagger resist, these are huge for that difficulty mode and borderline cheating on normal. To get a pair, you need to buy them from Madeline. Give her the Golden Idol and she'll sell them. If you happen to not get the Golden Idol, there is a chance that she's going to sell them in the post game after the final boss battle. This is how I got mine as I always mess up the Golden Idol quest. Make sure to grab at least one pair, if not more, for pawns. They're very, very good in Bitter Black Isle. I often wear the Gloves of Might in my videos, and I believe I mentioned them in my last tips video as well. These come from a quest related to the Griffin. Be sure to do it as these are required to efficiently climb monsters on classes that are not Strider. On Strider, it's a bit ridiculous as you're so insanely fast. Pretty funny honestly, but on the other classes they move so slow without these that is kind of painful. 
What's really nice is if you want an additional pair, and this also works for a few other quest-related armors, go talk to Jonathan. He can be found in the encampment after the Hydra fight. Once you have acquired these gloves, he will sell a pair. He's a pawn, so he only takes rift crystals instead of coins, and this can be worth it if you want a pawn to climb fast as well, or just happen to lose the gloves for yourself. He also sells some other items, but nothing too notable. Rust weapons are crazy. Once upgraded to three stars, you can inflict Torpor, which slows enemies, allowing for combat that is almost too easy. You can upgrade these as soon as you reach Grand Soren by purchasing the required tools from the Black Cat. Additionally, there's a very efficient way to use these weapons. If you have rusted daggers, you can use a skill called Dazzle Blast. It's on all dagger-related vocations and will instantly inflict Torpor once cast. It also stuns and covers a wide area. Now, the trick is that the sparks are not what actually inflicts the Torpor. Rather, the projectile itself in the very center of the blast does, which makes it tricky to use at first, and it's not amazing on small targets, but the bigger the beast, the easier it is to hit. If you plan to deal most of your damage from afar, this skill allows you to get to a medium distance from the enemy, instantly torpor them, and then bow them to death. This can be used with other weapons to inflict different debilitations as well, but torpor is probably the most useful one to pair this with. For the longest time, I had this quest to get giant fish, but I never really found that many of them. Fish are also great to eat as they grant great amounts of stamina. If you open your map and move on down to the very bottom left, you'll find Bloodwater Beach. Make sure to leave a port crystal here. It's an escort spot making for quick quest completion as well as having two fishing spots. I was able to get small, large, and huge fish from both spots rather consistently. If left to rot a bit, the fish will turn rank and grant you much more stamina than before, but don't let them go fully rotten or they'll be useless. You can farm these out by resting back in town for seven days or just stop by every once in a while to pick a view up. The giant fish are really cool as they fully restore stamina when in the rank state, making them extremely good for specific ranger builds. The golden idol is not an easy item to get. You need to follow this annoying brat around, and if you mess anything up, you fail. What's interesting though is there's a free golden idol forgery in Fornival's house. In the dining room up the stairs, you can see it perched atop in the rafters. It's impossible to reach normally, but luckily we have a secret weapon up our sleeve, barrels. You'll need four total barrels to do this, and just a warning, it's not exactly a science. You'll need to play around with it a bit, and with no guide, it took me about 30 minutes to figure this out. To get the barrels, you can explore the town. There's one on the stairs leading to the pawn guild, one behind the church, one on the ramp into the main district, and several behind the shop area. You'll need to walk a total of four barrels up to this room. Make sure to get rid of your pawns first, or they'll smash them with their hatred of these cheesy tactics. Once you have four barrels, start stacking them in a line in front of the idol. Your ultimate goal is to have two barrels on both ends and one in the middle. This will allow you to place the final barrel on top of the middle one. If done correctly, the top barrel will float slightly above the others, granting the extra height needed to reach the idol. Use that table there in already placed barrels to get the right positions. Whether it's useful or not, I did have a lot of fun trying to reach this. Now, do be careful as a golden idol forgery has two limitations. Don't give it to Madeline or the armorer in Grand Soren. The forgery does not count for them as they will not gain new inventory with it. You're going to need the real gold idol for them. The forgery, however, can be given to other shops for a 30% discount. Copy this one at the Black Cat for even more of them. Cornival also favors these if you want him to like you more. One interesting tactic you can use is stealing items from guards and traveling pawns with the Strider vocation. The skill Master Thief takes items right out of their inventory. You can get small amounts of money or healing orbs. Nothing crazy. However, you can, if lucky enough, get daggers called the Kunai Daggers. They have a dark enchant on them and will drop from sorcerer pawns. It's a rare chance, mind you, and I didn't get them while recording. I actually got them like the second time I tried this skill because of dumb luck, but never again. They're really good, especially if you get them early enough. Of course, this is a very RNG-based aspect, so it's not really the best tip. Instead, use Master Thief on guards outside the cities. 
they have these banners pretty often enough and if i remember correctly you need those for a quest i never found that many banners to finish the quest but with this you could get them rather quickly if you wanted to be aware that this skill is pretty handy is all i'm asking i ignored my pawn's inclination for quite some time and it really bit me in the butt later on Go into either of the inns or various encampments and you can find a knowledge chair. Use this to tell your pawn exactly how you want them to act, be aggressive or prioritize you when you're down. Talk more often and give hints or just shut up. This is extremely important if you're having your pawn switch to and from vocations. Certain vocations just don't play well if you have them on the wrong inclination. You also have options on your d-pad that let you give pawn commands. The general consensus, and I will agree with it, is don't use these. Using pawn commands can and will change your pawn's inclination without you knowing what it's doing. Making an aggressive pawn stand around doing nothing, for example. Set their inclination to what you want at the chair and then let them do their thing. Something I noticed a few people didn't realize is that switching vocations is completely free. At first, it costs discipline to go from, say, strider to fighter. But once you have the fighter unlocked, you can go back to strider without any cost. It's only got a price on it to unlock each vocation. Then you can go back and forth as much as you like. Warrior is a very cool looking class, but it can be hard to master. You may be disappointed because your damage just isn't good enough to play on that vocation. Luckily, you can head to the Black Cat again and buy Iraclis. The weapon grants an RNG based damage system where you basically do no damage at all or nine times the damage. It has some penalties as well, but it's your best friend if you want to go warrior. Against large monsters, you may start to notice that there's not much of a change in the damage. Do be aware that it gets a significant power boost once Dragonforged. This can be difficult to do, but getting that upgrade makes all the difference. Be sure to check this weapon out as it can be a game changer for enjoying the warrior class or hating it. At least until you get some of the later game weapons. For non-magic based vocations, and especially those with no ranged options, you might run into some trouble from time to time. Don't forget that Dragon's Dogma does have consumables and you could have a few of them in your stash. The really good ones will drop from Sorcerers in Bitter Black Isle, at least that's where to farm them the best. But these are quite powerful. The one that summons a giant light bubble is particularly good, but you also have ones that inflict blinding and summon skulls. Use these on occasion as they have some good power and can really support a pure strength build. You can favorite the pawns you want to use again. Searching for pawns is not always easy as it can take some time to find the correct setup that you want. Once looking at a pawn, you can actually set them as a favorite. You get a hundred of these and do make use of it. Later on, once you reach level 200, you only need a couple pawns with the exact equipment that you want. Use this feature to save a lot of time and get in and out of the rift as quick as possible. Being creative in combat can often result in some fun fights. You can grapple enemies so that they take more damage from pawns, throw enemies off of cliffs to their doom, or get monsters to fall off mountains and take loads of damage. Be creative as this game has a lot of freedom to offer, although still be careful or you might find yourself in an awkward position. Another weapon from the Black Cat that can be useful are the Dowsing Spikes. These daggers will give off a slight vibration and glow when near a chest. They look neat in the dark and can be very helpful for finding hidden chests. For those of us who are borderline blind when playing games, these are great. Often I walk right by stuff without realizing it and these could help prevent that. Now unfortunately their range isn't that large and it's often obvious where some of the chests are. But in Bitter Black Isle and several dungeons is not that obvious. Use these to find more treasure if you aren't aware of all the spawns. Oh, and they aren't half bad damage wise either. When playing Dragon's Dogma, you might come across this change to a cinematic camera. If you have a fighter pawn who can taunt, it happens pretty often, but monster animations can do it as well. Like here with the Chimera. I didn't mind this at first, but eventually it does get annoying. You can actually turn this off in your settings by switching cinematic camera to off. It gets rid of those weird transitions while in the middle of combat. Now, those are all the tips and tricks that I could think of that adds to the repertoire. Hopefully some of this stuff you didn't know about or at least can help you a bit. If you happen to be interested in the item that I used in the thumbnail, I recommend checking out the Black Cat once again. This is a staff used by sorcerers and it helps you deal more damage against evil eyes. These guys aren't that common for the most part, so it's not something I use myself, but you have to admit it looks pretty darn cool. Thanks for watching the video everyone and if you happen to enjoy it, feel free to leave a like down below. 
It will be interesting to see what mechanics and items get modified for Dragon's Dogma 2. With all the options given to players, I wonder what they will simply change or add in new altogether. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you next time.